Good evening and thank you for watching KTN News. My name is Dennis Aceto and this is Planet Action. Climate change is a problem across the globe affecting women, men, children, livestock and plants on this world. But as the global population, we can change this world by uniting and working together towards ensuring that we do better, that we unlearn what we have always known and embrace the new way of doing things. Later, we'll be having this conversation with Belinda Okongo, Gender Advisor, Pan-African Climate Justice Alliance. But before we get to that conversation, these are some of the stories making headlines today with regards to matters, climate and environment and in Nairobi, as the world continues to find solutions to the ongoing climate change that is causing disasters. Important part is the, in the process is ensuring that we restore our ecosystem to their natural form. President William Ruto today said that he will form a rivers commission that will work towards cleaning rivers in Nairobi. He says this will be important in ensuring that the city dwellers enjoy the natural resources and the benefits they come with. We will shortly, in fact by this Friday, I will be appointing a Nairobi rivers, rivers Commission to sort out the filth in our rivers. If you look at our rivers in Nairobi, it is a, it's a sad story. And uh, I want to assure the residents of Nairobi, as I do the rest of the country, that we will make Nairobi River what it should be. A place that people can enjoy, a place where enterprise can grow, and we will get rid of the sewage, and we will get rid of all the other um, affluence and effluence that are going into uh, the city of uh, this, our city rivers. And thank you very much, Governor Sarkaja, for working with my deputy to ensure that we we agree with all the stakeholders to set up the Nairobi City Com uh, the Nairobi Rivers Commission, so that we can sort out our rivers in the city. And as the president promises to sort out Nairobi County, Wasingishu County government in collaboration with different organizations has started a cleaning exercise in Elred Town. The activity's aim is to remove waste in the city to ensure that the environment is clean. According to Wasingishu Deputy Governor John Barrow-Rot, the residents of the town will enjoy a clean environment as well as the view of the town. I want to thank the municipality for the efforts that they have done over the years to maintain a very good degree of cleanliness within the municipality together with the, all the partners i want to thank all of us who are partnering with the municip municipality to ensure that our town is clean we will be having an annual event and i promise you that in our next event we will be having a large participation by the county staff, because I can see here there are very few who are outnumbered. So the CECs who are here and the CEOs and the directors, next time make sure that we have enough of our employees here. Cleanliness should not be a practice. Cleanliness should be a habit. Cleanliness should be our culture. And we start, I know we are very smart, clean people generally in Eldoret. We want that cleanliness to be seen in our environment. Our environment is where we operate, where we do business, where all of us, even all citizens who come to town, we really need to have that culture of being a very clean city. Now everybody is coming together in making sure that the world they live in is cleaner, is better, just not for themselves but for the future. But now let's have the conversation today with regards to gender and climate change where gender inequality coupled with the climate crisis is one of the greatest challenges of our time. It poses threats to ways of life, livelihoods, health, safety and security for women and girls, men and even the plants around the world. Historically, climate change scientists, researchers and policy makers have struggled with how to make the vital connections between gender, social equity and climate change. As more and more data and research reveal their clean correlation and clear correlation rather, it's time to talk about the disparate impacts of climate change and why gender equality is key to climate change and what you can do to support solutions. Belinda Okungu is Gender Advisor, Pan-African Climate Justice Alliance and now joins us live. 
Good evening, Belinda, from where you are. And the conversation today is all about gender equality with regards to addressing climate change. Just how important is it for both genders, men and women, coming together in addressing this big problem that we continue to experience the world over? Good evening, Dennis. Thank you for having me. I'm glad to be on the show. Now, um, I'd like by first start uh, elaborating that uh, climate change is not gender neutral. The effects affect everybody. When we talk about the loss of livelihoods, when we talk about loss of life, when we talk about health problems, reduced income, both men and women are affected. Out cultural norms and social barriers uh, women and girls tend to face greater risks that are unique. For example, when you talk about land ownership, um, they, 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 they lack that ability to own land because of the patriarchal nature of the society, especially in Africa, as well as they are disproportionately responsible for securing food, clean water, um, and uh, even for looking for fuel for the livelihoods of their children. Um, when it comes to agriculture, which is very prone to climate change issues, they work extra hard to look for alternative uh, incomes when crops are failed and the land is no longer arable. Girls will leave school. Girls will leave school to be to go back home and help the additional to help their mothers uh, carry on the additional burden, and in some instances they are married off early by their parents because it is one extra mouth to feed. Again, um, we have seen tensions as a result of the effects of climate on the, on the household that results in conflict leading to violence, including sexual violence. And when it comes to climate catastrophes, the women and girls survive less because one, they lack access to information that is uh, timely and adequate and we know that women and women generally are not the decision makers in their homes. And even afterwards, um, when it comes to relief food, as we experience uh, experiencing now in our country, you will see fewer women lining up to be able to get this food. And in addition to that, they have unique health needs. During such uh, catastrophes, for example, their ability to access health facilities is hampered and especially when it comes to maternal and child health and this makes them extra vulnerable and i'll hand it over to you at this point let's talk about uh, there is the aspect of women going through this part of climate change but now how do we also look at men as people who because of climate change they are unable to provide to their families because the animals that they that they depend on have died at that point so they need to get out there and also come on the table and provide so how do we merge these two groups together and ensure that they are united in addressing in addressing this huge problem that we have um as i've mentioned um gender is not um unique to one actor um the differentiated impact of climate change means that in doing an assessment we have to ensure that um both actors are considered in the decisions that are being made one of the problems that we have faced is um when you look at research for example um the researchers are biased to uh, women needs. You hardly hear about men. You hardly hear about the impacts that these particular men face. So for example, um, you will then hear uh, the women are depicted as, you know, victims. Uh, so solutions are then formed around these problems. And so men and their um, contribution or even how they are affected are not um, quite into these studies. So one of the things, the call to action, is um, we need to have a clear gender lens when it comes to how we do our research. Um, we need to 
interrogate segregated data beyond just the numbers, but go deeper and um, address the socioeconomic aspects that affect men. Because when it comes to livelihoods, I've talked about um, women, uh, smallholder farmers, uh, when it rains, the crops are swept away. They have to look for alternative sources of income. But for the men who are also small scale holders or even large scale uh, farmers, they are equally impacted. What does this mean for them? We hardly get to hear this dimension in our studies. When it comes to um, alternative sources of livelihoods, um, when it comes to um, uh, looking for additional income, uh, men will go out there. They are the ones who, uh, when it comes to disasters, they are the ones who are actually out there trying to assist wildfires, uh, saving lives. So they are disproportionately also affected. But we never get to hear these stories and this sort of, um, you know, uh, does not d d d d negates the idea that we need to bring everybody on board. We should not leave anybody behind. So one of the things I think, as I said, research must be um, gender responsive. When we draw our programs, we must take men into account. I think w when, when, we, when we talk about uh, gender equality, the assumption that it's about women, again, you will never get to hear men in some of these meetings they are never even, uh, you know, brought on board. And then we find women, um, you know, are the ones who are, you know, highlighting their issues. Who are the ones who dominate the policy spaces? It is the men. Who are the ones who, uh, you know, perform some of these researches, which as I have mentioned, are, you know, biased to, to, to women needs? It is the men. So I think the call to action is now men, we, we really need to rethink how we bring everyone on board so that men are part of these conversations. They also need to understand. <laughs> if you can hear me, uh, Belinda. If you, if you can hear me, Belinda, we seem to be having a problem with the connectivity. But um, let me just ask you the next question, where is, as reports continue to emerge, it says that gender factor when it comes to addressing climate change is really important. Even the Paris Accord put it in text and insisted that this has to be given the priority moving forward. But in terms of policies and even just making sure that these things are achievable, that these things are implemented, does not come in the implementation aspect of it. So as we sit down and go through COP27, COP28 will come, and even as countries just sit down and see on how best to attract, uh, to attract uh, climate change and address it well, how do we sit back and see that this group of uh, gender is affected in a certain way, this other group is affected in a different way, then just come together and sit down and look at how best to move forward so that no group feels disenfranchised. And remember that at COP27, it was decided that loss and damage will be put together in ensuring that the countries that actually emit more into the atmosphere sit down and give more so that we are able as a global fraternity, as a global population, to be able to address the problems that are associated with climate change we remember that we remember that several world leaders have sat down to agree on how best to address this our president william root is big on planting trees he says that by the year 2032 he wants to grow five billion trees but let's just listen into what the president said earlier today we will shortly in fact by this friday I will be appointing a Nairobi rivers, rivers Commission to sort out the filth in our rivers. If you look at our rivers in Nairobi, it is a, it's a sad story. 
And uh, I want to assure the residents of Nairobi, as I do the rest of the country, that we will make Nairobi River what it should be, a place that people can enjoy, a place where enterprise can grow, and we will get rid of the sewage, and we will get rid of all the other um, affluence and effluence that are going into uh, the city of uh, this, our city rivers. And thank you very much, Governor Sarkaja, for working with my deputy to ensure that we we agree with all the stakeholders to set up the Nairobi City, uh, the Nairobi Rivers Commission, so that we can sort out our rivers in the city. And Belinda, uh, as I was asking earlier is how do we ensure that in terms of policy that both men and women are included in the text because even the paris agreement recognizes both genders as critical in making sure that we lower the degrees of temperature in these world so in terms of implementation what do we need to do to make sure that no side feels left out Belinda, Dennis, if, can... if, I, uh, if I had the tail end of your question, mm -hmm. it, it's about implementation. Yes. Um, no. At what level? I'm asking, uh, in terms of implementation, how do we ensure that world leaders, that the implementation of Paris Agreement, COP27 agreements, people come together to ensure that the proposals, the recommendations are actually implemented to the T. Okay. Um, so in terms of, uh, there were many agreements that came from the COP27, but in particular, I want to speak uh, and since we're talking about gender, I think I want to focus on plan was implemented to responsive uh, climate action across all sectors. This is mitigation, uh, adaptation, and um, it failed largely because of the implementability of it and also the lack of what the gender focal point would play. Um, as it stands now, uh, it was revised, but with very weak language. They acknowledge certain uh, aspects like gender differentiated impacts of climate change and the role of women. Uh, and also parties were encouraged. But you see the word encouragement to use gender, uh, sex disaggregated data and gender analysis in implementing climate policies is not strong in, enough. And, and, and so unless deliberate effort is taken by countries to integrate the gender action plan in their national uh, plans, then um, so that it informs the planning and budgeting process at, uh, at that level, then this just remains a framework that uh, all those uh, nice um, aspirations that we hope in terms of gender responsive action will just remain on paper. And thank you very much, Belinda, for your time on the show today. We thank you for your kind words and also on what we need to do as the world population with regards to addressing climate change and uh, what we need to do in terms of action. It is remembered that gender, when it comes to climate change, is not about the women, it's not about the men, but collective responsibility in making sure that we make this world a better place for us for our children and generations to come. My name is Dennis Aceto, and as I keep saying that we keep making this world green, a better place for us because this is the only place we call home. I'm Dennis Aceto. Enjoy the rest of your viewing. Good evening.